sicken a lot of people. <laughs> We're going to nerd out tonight here, folks. And Kurt Hall, he's with Climate Change Connections. I met Kurt uh, in October when the Pallister government announced their climate change made in Manitoba climate change package out at Okamak Marsh. And uh, I was struck by his comments, so I asked him to join us tonight so that we could do a little review. It turned out to be serendipitous because climate change and carbon tax, big part of this budget. We'll get into that in just a minute. But Mary Agnes, maybe riff for a minute, if you will, on what you saw. You were in the lockup with us for a little while. You saw yep. Cameron Friesen uh, do a scrum. What, what, what did you think of the budget? Um, you know, it was interesting because the, the province sort of telegraphed so much of it beforehand. So there wasn't a lot that people weren't expecting. You know, I think the the um, uh, the Winnipeg Foundation Conservation Fund was one kind of goodie, and there were a couple others. Um, but it really was still focused on this, this kind of single-minded look at getting the fiscal house in order. Right. Sal almost every single line I item in this budget for salaries is down. Not by a lot, but by a little bit. Provincial salaries and, and staff costs are, are, are budgeted to go down. We're cutting the deficit, which is not as a good thing. I mean, hard sure. to argue with that. Uh, some small tax cuts for Manitobans, um, also keeping with that conservative ethos, um, and sort of looking at to the future at, at cutting the PST, assuming that's going to happen. The flip side to that, though, is there wasn't a lot of for what purpose. I think at some point, uh, we're, I mean, we're midterm here, so maybe it's a bit early, but I think at some point Manitobans are going to say, okay, got things going, got the house in order, now what? What's the larger vision? What's, what's, what, why are we doing this? What's the next thing? You alluded to things that we did know. I mean, new schools, there's going to be new five schools, of them. Yep. Uh, modest tax relief in the term of uh, raising income tax brackets. A couple of thousand dollars over the next couple of years. A lot of people that pay taxes currently will not be paying taxes. I think the number's in the thousands. Couple, couple thousand, I think, mm. to start mm. in the Maybe first couple of years. No, yeah. I think the, the big number comes in the later years, like the fourth and fifth years. That's when you get into the 19,000 kind of thing. Yeah. Sure. But one of the things we were told there was going to be climate change yep. details, not only on the carbon tax side, but our impression was that it will be an ex explanation of the program going forward. And as we know, this has been a bun fight between the Pallister mm -hmm. government and Ottawa. Uh, the PCs here in Manitoba saying we'll go $25 per ton for carbon tax. And the Fed saying it got to be up to 50 in five years. So I'm going to bring Kurt into the conversation mm -hmm. here. When you looked at the budget today, first of all, what were your expectations? What did you think would be in there? Well, I was hoping for more detail about how the, the new uh, carbon levy revenue was going to be spent. And really, it was pretty thin on details with respect to that. Okay, so the follow-up question to that is, where should it have been spent, or in your mind? Because you poured over these documents. Yeah, and where, sh where might it still be spent? Fair enough. Right? Yeah. Because, because this budget only covers the revenue that's going to be realized after September 1st up until the end of the fiscal year. So that's, you know, half of the fiscal year has already been, has already gone by. So they're only anticipating 143 million of new revenue with respect to the carbon levy. After, we, after that, this fiscal year is over and they get into the, the, a full fiscal year, now we're talking $248 million. Big dollars. Big dollars. So that money will still need to be spent somewhere, right? Even if it winds up to be revenue neutral, this money that, that's new, com new money coming in from the carbon tax, carbon levy, is, is going to have to be reinvested in ways that result in carbon emissions. And I say that because the, the, you talked about the, the $25 a ton made, made in Manitoba solution. Well, the, the argument that, that the, the government's been making to the feds is that, that with our approach, we will see emission reduction results right. greater than yes. what, it, what we would have seen if we simply implemented your 10 dollars $20, $30 uh, tax scheme, right? So it, to, in my thinking, that means that there's, uh, uh, an in, it's, it's incumbent upon, upon their policy to show results. We're going to cycle back 
to climate change a couple of times in this, but I did want to sort of reach out into the audience and knock off a couple of questions we already have. So Legal Aid Manitoba represents a historic high number of individual, individuals charged with criminal offenses last year. The person uh, writing the question, and we know these things, meth and opioid crisis, increases in firearms, uh, massive increase in sexual assault reporting, something of an echo from the Me Too and all the things we're seeing in politics mm -hmm. and entertainment. And the, the question is, what does this budget mean for support for legal aid, which many people find themselves having to rely on when they go to court? You've been through the documents. What does it say? Well, we, we just had a quick look because it was a great question and it's, it's flat, essentially. And I think that's interesting, especially because there was just a big report um, by sort of a team of legal experts that compared all of the um, sort of access to justice systems across the country and Manitoba fared very poorly and there was a call for less incarceration, better legal aid, better access to justice. So legal aid's been, um, yeah, I, I, I would say arguably underfunded in this province for a very long time. Somebody also asking a question about uh, the spending increase for health, which is 1%. We were talking about it uh, earlier today. When you have inflation, that's not really, that's a de facto cut. If your operations are going up, drug, drugs, uh, equipment costs, mm -hmm. uh, uh, operations in general, uh, the question is, uh, is the province preparing for privatizing some services? Well, it doesn't say that in the budget, does nope. it? Nope. <laughs> uh, and so we really don't know that. There has been musing that some diagnostics, for example, may Yep. may indeed be privatized, not necessarily privatized, but opened up. And some elements of market. home care too, I That's think right. is also, yeah. Right. Yep. Uh, where does Manitoba film tax credit sit in the budget? <clears throat> it remains for the 2018-19 year, but I believe I heard Cameron Fries and the finance minister say it, they're gonna review it. Yeah, I think they struck a committee, is that right? They've struck mm. a tax force, but they were really quick to point out that it remains. Um, I think because I think there was some scuttlebutt um, that it was it was in danger. And I think the arts groups were worried it was in danger. So was Neighborhoods Alive. Neighborhoods Alive funding is still uh, is still flat for flat. now. Yeah, which uh, that's good. That's a, yeah. Back to the climate change package for a minute, and it, we are going to be obsessed a little bit by this because, in my analysis, not opinion but analysis, if you're going to bring in uh, a, a new tax regime, so you're going to you're going to raise the cost of gasoline at the pump, uh, uh, natural gas to heat your home, uh, and uh, diesel and propane. People are going to want to know where it's going to go. And it was interesting this afternoon, if you go around the rotunda in the legislature, all the stakeholders are there. Really, Canadian Federation of Independent Business and Taxpayers Federation and municipalities and the mayor of Winnipeg and poverty advocates, everybody's there and they're giving their take on the budget. And I heard a number of times, well, we don't know what kind of support is in this for this or that or the other thing. What's your opinion? Do you think that they might have, if they were going to raise taxes, tell you where the spending was going to go? Is that, in your evaluation, is that sort of a strategic error? Or, uh, I don't know. I wouldn't call it an error. But it's, uh, it, it might be a strategic play. Uh, and I'm still anticipating that, that they're going to have to tell us. I'm just, I'm maybe a little more patient than some others, <laughs> right? Fair enough. Th that, that at the next fiscal year is when I'm really looking for real solid programs to be, to be announced. There was, a, there was a paragraph in the budget that said, and it was sort of like one of those we would consider doing. You know, and it include the electrification of transit buses and uh, building envelopes being improved. So in other words, retrofitting buildings with new windows and yep. better heating systems and all this sort of thing. But they were, all of these things were just kind of floating in there. Yep. There wasn't money for it. Yep. Uh, if, if you were to pick one or two items that would big bang for the buck yep. on emissions, yep. what would they be? I would, I would suggest uh, the electrification of transit Electrification of vehicles overall uh, is, is, is money well invested, all, both in terms of, of reduction of, of <coughs> greenhouse gas emissions, but also in, in terms of new revenue for hydro. Because spending money on uh, transportation electricity, or, or when we can, we can shift people away from fossil fuels and start to spend money on electricity in order to move vehicles around, that's n now that's revenue going to hydro instead of going to Alberta. 
right? right? So there's there's good things to be said there. And so electrification and also uh, I would like to see money for transit operations that uh, I haven't seen support for yet, but I'm uh, in terms of being able to give some give people who, were, who are now going to be subject to, to the levy an alternative, well, you've got to give them better transit service. And you can, there, there's already a federal program, there's the Federal Sustainable Transportation Fund, uh, that's, uh, uh, the allocation for Manitoba, I think, is something like $80 million, something like that. But, but money like that is typically for infrastructure. So you can put a new garage in, you can, you can put uh, <coughs> uh, new buses. Shacks, there. bus shacks, etc. Et you can do all that, but if you don't have the operating capital to run those buses, you're not going to get the riders to to shift their 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 bums out of their cars, hmm. right? We have a question here that says, "When are we going to see a PST reduction?" The commitment has always been 2020, doubled down effectively now, uh, but now PST reduction is connected to mitigating the cost of uh, carbon taxes. And the Premier and the Finance Minister both stated equivocally when, unequivocally, when you get towards year three and four, you're going to get some of the money you're paying at the pump back by a PST reduction. Do you remember a progressive conservative opposition or the Premier saying there's a connection between carbon taxes and PST reduction? No, and I think, I think that's sort of... Yeah, I, th that, I think that was always the question. How are they? How exactly are they going to fund the PS? Is it going to be funded uh, through deficits, or is will will it be funded through pot revenue? Will it be funded through the carbon tax? And I think I think typically we've heard not maybe denials. You know, I I think they've been fairly careful not to say that the carbon tax is going to fund the PST uh, decrease. But I think now it's fairly clear that those two are they go hand in hand. Um, you mentioned pot revenue. Uh, yeah. We combed around and yeah. looked, and, and uh, the revenue item for Manitoba liquor <coughs> lotteries goes up by thirty million dollars. But who knows if that's more beer? You know, yes, it's what did. part of that is pot? Right. You know? Yeah. And, and I mean, we have to understand that they would have uh, increases in expenses coming in the first year. Yeah. This is a market that nobody really can predict, is it? I mean, you're competing against pot dealers. Yep and dial dealers that show up at houses and say, here you go, mm -hmm. now you're going to have stores, uh, they have infrastructure at liquor and lotteries because they're going to be the sort of wholesaler of, uh, of pot, maybe in year two, hey? Uh, yeah, and I think, I think Cam Friesen, the finance minister, said he's not expecting much, if anything. And I, I, from what I've heard, not being an expert on this, that sounds like the prudent approach that, that many governments are not expecting what I imagine to be a huge pot windfall at some point. Maybe it'll develop down the line, but mm. you know, I, that's why I imagined maybe pot would fund the PST, you know, which is kind of a wonderful marriage of, you know, of, of, of taxes, but yeah, but, <laughs> uh, but uh, it doesn't sound like a that's likely. To get through your head yeah, when true. You're uh, first, yeah, yeah. But yeah, <laughs> I remember you saying many months ago that the government's posturing on marijuana legislation was a little unusual to you. You looked at it as an economic development yeah. opportunity, yet the government was completely looking at it as a safety issue, yep. uh, road Try, safety, exactly. children, that sort of yep. thing. I remember we were at a Manitoba Chamber of Commerce event yeah. and you said, why is the justice minister here? Why isn't... Who, uh, Cliff Cullen, who was a growth and trade. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Enterprise and trade. Uh, perhaps that that's out of the barn now, yeah. you know, as other provinces are getting on this faster, they're going to be doing the growing and the, yep. the, that sort of stuff. But that was sort of part of, I think, one of the missing links of this budget is there wasn't talk of job creation and green jobs and maybe the carbon tax will fund a gr new green industries. Yeah. Where, where, where do they see the economic growth coming from. And I know that there is work being done on a new economic growth strategy and a task force and, you know, at the end of June we should hear something. Sure. Um, but, but even that, I was surprised at sort of the lack of focus on, as I say, the what's next. This, this, this helps us grow the economy in these five ways and these are our, this is our approach. Question here for Kurt, do you expect any new incentives? And I'm going to take from that because there's not a lot of detail passed here. Maybe just scroll down. Oh, for geothermal heat mm. pump technology in the future. Do you, do you think that there's a, a sp if, and we will get some definition on what they're going to spend yep. on initiatives. Yep. Do 
you think that geothermal could be a part of the it, thing? It well should be, quite frankly. Okay. Because, I mean, we were talking, we focused on transportation when we were talking about ways that this money could be reinvested. We talked right. about public transit. But the other big emitter is from building heat, heating buildings. And in order to do that, to, to really make an inroad there in terms of reducing our emissions, we ca we've got to get away from using natural gas for that heat, and geothermal is one of those alternatives. So better insulation, better building envelope, and uh, supplementing that better envelope with, with geothermal is definitely should be part of, part of the, the package, part of the solution. About five minutes before I did the interview with you in Okamak Marsh in October about the Made in Manitoba Green Plan, I spoke to uh, the, the head of the Manitoba Trucking Association, and he looked at that plan in October and he said, well, it's a, it's a kind of a, a promise or a commitment here for retrofitting our, our fleet. Yep. And then he saw nothing. I spoke to him this afternoon. Yep. He saw nothing in here specific. Yep. And he, he had a very interesting quote, it, and I'll paraphrase it. He, he said something along the lines of, we don't have a choice. We can't take the bus now. You know, yeah. we can't put in geothermal or solar in our houses. We have to drive the trucks. Yeah. And we're already operating at a very highly efficient level. I mean, the big fleets here in Manitoba, you know, we have one yeah. of the biggest trucking industries in the country. Yeah. And these are, these are business people with keen focus on dropping cost. Yeah. Well, I mean, can you, can you sort of sure, help well, Terry Shaw at trucking <laughs> out yeah, with his yeah, frustration? Yeah. Terry and I have talked about this quite okay. a bit and yeah. actually worked together on some recommendations. Okay. And, and one of the, one of the, the, the ways that truckers uh, burn fuel needlessly is when it comes to keeping their vehicles warm when they have no alternative. Idling. Right? Idling. So you'll see them at the truck stops right there. Sure. Well, there are alternatives. They're called auxiliary power units. And, but an auxiliary power unit for, for a tractor is in the tens, ten, fifteen thousand dollars kind of range, okay? Hmm. Now, it's one thing if you're the bison, if you're a bison transit or something like that, but the majority of the truckers in Manitoba all have three trucks or less, okay? And the majority of the trucking companies. And so they don't have the, the spare capital to spend on that, that capital investment. Something like this, like a, you know, when you've got a, a, the potential revenue fund, could be reinvested through the Trucking Association to their members to help them to finance uh, auxiliary power units. And in addition, you're also going to need um, some infrastructure at the truck stops, right? Because there's, there's auxiliary power units that run strictly on diesel, but there's also electric auxiliary power units, and that's mm. the ideal, right? If you can put in, a, in an electric uh, auxiliary power unit, you know, but you've got to be able to plug your truck in and keep all of your fluids warm and your and the, the cab, the, the sleeper warm and things like that if you had a, a, an electric auxiliary power unit. But the thing is, if you look at the, at the climate and green plan, part of their justification for the, the $25 a ton, they've, they've done modeling where they had um, a certain amount of reductions if if you went with the federal program by itself, and then they've got their own model that's almost you know twice as much uh, reduction, and there was a big slice of that was from from trucking. Hmm. So they've already sort of given us the heads up that that's something Might they've, be they've coming modeled. Down the road. They've <coughs> modeled and and they've been been thinking about seriously. I spoke to the finance minister at the uh, just after six o'clock. He came on our show tonight live. And I sort of pressed him on the where and the when, and he, he, he gave me the stay tuned kind of, you know, it's coming, we have to do more consultation. I, I am a little surprised that they aren't at that moment now. I mean, I, I was sort of aware that the climate change package, such as it was, was ready to go last summer, and then they held mm -hmm. on to it for some time. Uh, maybe just switching gears, though, here for a second. You know, there's a question here about new infrastructure money. Um, mm. I know that roads have dropped. Like they're, Maintenance, they're, right? Not roads, capital. Um, not I guess capital, it's all kind of mixed in. Yeah. It, yeah, improving roads. There is more money for water infrastructure. Mm -hmm. So moving water around. And of course, they've got the big <coughs> Lake St. Martin <coughs> channel that they're sure going to invest hundreds yeah. of millions of dollars in. There is money for Freedom Road in here. That's right. But you blowing up infrastructure money, sort of investments. And you alluded to sort of the, in your midterm, Tell us where you're going. One of the things that I noted was that there's not a lot of money, like in economic development. They they are working on a strategy, but yeah. 
it I seemed it that dropped. on every level, yeah. uh, in every department that had something to do with economic development, their post-secondary institutions are going to get less money. So yep. if we're talking training and skills for the, the 21st century economy, uh, robotics, AI, uh, uh, driverless vehicles, which is going to come in, there's no sort of you know, f nose to that going forward. Do you think that there's, these are going to be liabilities as they sort of work towards a... Or is it like, oh, well, I got to pay more at the pump, so that's what I'm going to remember. Yeah, you know, I mean, I sort of think, I mean, uh, worrying about whether economic development agencies and there's an economic plan, that's probably not some, no. a ballot issue, Fair right? Enough. Yeah. Um, but that does speak to how, how the economy is doing, how unemployment is doing, how people, do people feel like they have options for jobs? Right. And that's not the, not something that the government controls all its own. Right. I, I might argue they don't, but yeah, they take a lead, but they, they have limited levers, I think, in some ways to, to make big changes there. Um, but I th and when I think about when we get out of this budget bubble, going through line by line. Will we ever? Will we ever, ever yeah. I mean, and, and most people don't pay nearly the attention to it that we are. Yeah. I think, what are people going to take away from this? They're going to they're gonna say, uh, oh, I got a school. I'm in one of the five ridings, hot ridings, that gets a school. And they're going to say, in September, whoa, gas just went up five cents. And I thought, am I getting a tax cut? Uh, oh, geez, what's the, what's the dinner table chat about the basic exemption, which is not a phrase that rolls off anybody's tongue, right? No. So <laughs> I'm trying to figure out if, you know, am I gonna, at the end of the day, am I gonna be paying more this year? Forget next year, tell me about now. Am I gonna be paying more? And I think the answer is yes. As an average person, you probably are paying more in the next year. Yes. Um, you know, and, and am I looking forward to, do I believe a PST cut is coming? How are we going to afford that? The, these are kind of the, the macro questions that I think people, in so much as they think about the budget at all, are going to be looking at. These are maybe the, the practical everyday takeaways. Did I get a school? I'm in Waverly West. Yep, got a school. And, whoa, school's back in. I'm driving the kids to work every day or to school and gas is five cents. Even though I might intuitively say, that's I, I'm, I'm, I'm in favor of carbon tax, we've got to do something, climate change is bad, I'm still stuck with five cents. You Timing know? is everything in yeah. politics, as you well know. And I mean, if well, we it's get smart a not to do it in July, you know. Yeah. Interest rate increases, that is going to have a knock on effect on the, the, what we're, our debt service now in Manitoba, they announced today, is about a billion dollars. That's a billion dollars you pay out of the province to borrow money to run <laughs> government. It's a billion dollars out of everybody's budget, whether it's mitigating climate change, healthcare, yep. uh, infrastructure, you name it. Just cycling back though to... to uh, Bef Before you go there, like I was just gonna want to comment on Mary mm -hmm. Agnes's comment mm -hmm. about but people are gonna notice the five cents. Right. And I'm not so sure. It really, there's because there's so many other factors involved in the price that you pay True. at the pump. And I mean, if you go down Pembina Highway and you look at o over the course of a week, You'll see the price at, at the pump go up and down. Sure, by a that's true. All the time, right? Yeah. And and really, what it's timing is everything. May is long weekend. Close your yeah, eyes. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, <laughs> and, but September first, there's all kinds of factors that can come into play, and there could be the the the, the carbon tax can come could come into play at a, about the same time as gas just drops by yeah, five cents yeah, yeah. anyway. They could get lucky. You know, Governments sometimes don't get lucky, but you know, they could get lucky on but that. But there's also going to be just a matter of, of public perception, mm -hmm. but, and that's completely valid. Because if you look at, at British Columbia, for example, where they pay quite a bit more for, for gasoline than we do here in Manitoba, and almost everybody blames it on the carbon tax. But even though the differential is something like 30 cents between what they pay in Vancouver, Greater Vancouver to what they pay in Winnipeg for, for a liter of gasoline, most of that tax is not carbon tax. No. Most of that, that additional 30 cents or whatever is a lot of other municipal mm. taxes and, and, and bridge taxes and all this other kind of stuff, right. right? Right. But everybody blames it on the carbon tax. They say, well, we pay more in BC because we got the carbon tax. Hmm. That's, so public perception, whatever that manifests itself yep. to be come September 1st, is going to play a big factor. Yep. There's a question here about will carbon tax help farmers in any way? Oh. Of course, we know that they are protected. The entire agriculture industry, anybody producing food, is going to be protected from paying carbon taxes. Yeah. Do you know, would there be any incentives to, to make combines, for example, or, or swathers? 
Yeah. Uh, there won't uh, there won't be barns, any, you know. Yeah, I mean, there won't there won't be incentives when it comes to to fossil fuel use for uh, for tractors and combines. There won't be that that I that I, I don't think there's anything. Well, there's on a the protection either. for uh, colored protect, gas. Protection right. for it. Yeah. So they're purple not gas. they're no longer going to be or they they basically the purple gas protection that they already have is going to be maintained. Right. Okay. Right? That's what it amounts to. But there's not going to be something extra put on top of that, giving farmers a, a further ability to reduce their fuel consumption, mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. kind of thing. But that that hundred and three million dollar uh, endowment, yeah, right, is intended for. Uh, it said for for changes in in wetlands and agricultural mm. land usage and forestry, right? I believe something yeah, like that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. Plus the forty million, which is really yeah, sick. The 40, so 40 yeah. Really let's, sick. Yeah, let's, yeah, let's, yeah. Let's move the forty million elsewhere. Off, okay. All okay. right. Okay. But I'm just curious what that hundred and three will amount yeah. to because there's been long for for quite some time before this budget was announced there's talk about uh, the Alice program yeah. alternative land use uh, and sustainability I forget what it is uh, that which is a way for farmers to receive money to change their land practices and, and potentially livestock foraging practices and things like that and I'm wondering if that hundred and three million dollars yeah. might be the the vehicle through which funds for yep. Alice type programs come hmm. Interesting. I, just to move into the general politics of the whole thing a, a little <coughs> bit, um, they did get, I, I talked to an economist, he gave him kudos for dropping the deficit, and you sort of alluded yep. to it. It is, a, is that going to, I mean, when you talk to people, when you poll them, yeah. do, they, do they ever go, oh yeah, those deficit fighters? No. They don't, hey? <laughs> No, no, the deficit, and people, I think I if you ask them, I mean, uh, yeah, but you're you, right? I'm you're yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think if you asked people specifically, geez, there's there's a deficit. This is how big it is. It it's grown. It's shrinking. Here's the, some details about it. They would say, oh yeah, that, that's bad. Yeah. But if you say, what is like, what's your big priority for the provincial government? What do you want them to do? Deficit fighting is very rarely the Fair top enough. answer, even close to it. Hmm. Um, but I do think it's part and parcel, and, and that's why I sort of point to like all of the various fiscally prudent things that they're doing, which they are quite rightly doing, mm. the deficit is part of that. I think the deficit speaks to a larger sense that people have that the Tories are trying to be good fiscal managers, uh, for better or worse. Which speaks to their base. And I wonder if you yeah. can tell me, you know, when, when I think of the progressive conservatives, I don't naturally think, and I don't mean to be unfair here, but I don't naturally think of, of people that talk about climate change and the environment as a focus, there are, is a wing of the cons progressive federal party and progressive conservative party that does focus on that, but the general base doesn't. Do you think it's a hard sell for them when they go out in the hustings to say, we're going to raise gas and we're going to do this and we're going to do that uh, uh, in an effort to drop greenhouse gas emissions? Yeah, raising, raising the price of gas is a tough sell anywhere outside the perimeter. I mean, th because the, the, the argument will come back from anybody that lives out in the country to say that they have no alternative. Right. Right. That's that's the argument that comes back. Now, and so it's going to be a tough sell for them. I, I have a counter there, though, that that um, really this is an incentive as as fuel prices go up. This is an in, it should be an incentive to to enhance local economies in in rural areas. I mean, for the last few decades, what we've been seeing in in small towns is the, the closure of, of a lot of, of stores and everything in these small towns for, for people's ability to buy things in the small towns. Instead, the people would prefer to, to, to spend money on gasoline to go to the bigger centers mm. in order to save a few pennies. Mm. What, I'm, what I'm hoping for, for uh, from maybe incentives or, or, or whatever as a consequence of this, this shift that we're looking at is the, the redevelopment of, of local economies in these smaller municipalities. So then people don't have to drive as far all the time. I, I, we're, we're getting to the end of our, our time and it's blasted through. Uh, I, I guess the final question, and I'll, I'll knock off a couple of these. Uh, can you highlight what's new for families and children in the budget? There was some increase in spending in, in some of those departments. I did see there's certainly uh, uh, child and family services yep. getting more money. There's some spaces, <coughs> uh, child care <coughs> spaces coming. Uh, economic development in the north, there was a sort of uh, blowing a little bit of wind towards their look north strategy yep. that is still not completely concluded. It's 
consultative, there's nothing firm on yeah. paper there. But maybe to wrap up, I'll ask you the same question, but from a general sense from you and then from climate change and carbon tax from you, Premier Pallister on Friday said, best, best budget, budget ever. ever. This is going to be that. wonderful. Yeah. Manitobans are going to love this. I'll start with you, Kurt. Uh, best budget ever for the climate? This, this is in a momentous step forward to put a more realistic price on carbon pollution. Okay. <laughs> De that sounds faint actually phrase, pretty I close guess. to a, yeah. you know, not maybe best, but pretty decent, I, mean, that, I would that's say. An yeah. That's an important step. Yeah. And, and we said before, this is a PC government that's, that's implementing a carbon right. tax. So, yeah. so they get points for political courage. Sure. Okay, yeah. fair enough. And Mary Agnes, best budget ever, wonderful. Manitobans are going to love this budget? No. Probably not. And, and, and I mean, the polls will tell we're about to start actually polling in this round right at this exact minute. So we'll see if they get a bump. Um, I wouldn't yeah. say this is this is the kind of budget that's going to give people a bump or get, give the Tories a bump. But we'll see. Uh, you know, we'll see what what filters out. I, I don't think there was enough in here that was quite sexy enough to really resonate outside this this bubble. Oh. We're in the bubble, too. We're in the bubble. And we're not tell looking you. sexy. <laughs> Thank you both for joining me tonight. Kurt, yeah. Kurt Hall for Climate Change Connections. Mary Agnes Welsh works with Probe Research. She's a former reporter, uh, did the kind of horrible work that I did at one point. <laughs> Thank them both. My name is Sean Cavanaugh. Have a great evening. If I didn't get to all your questions, I do apologize. We had lots of people interested in it. And keep looking, reading, listening, and watching. Cheers. <laughs>